Welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley. Deb Bowen joins us. She's our local leader of junior achievement. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. A lot of people have had junior achievement come to their school, but for those that aren't familiar with it, can you just tell us a little bit about what it's about? Sure. Our purpose is to prepare and inspire young people to succeed in our global economy. We really have three areas of focus. We have entrepreneurship, uh, workforce readiness and financial literacy and really the way we accomplish this and I know you know because you've been in our classroom <laughs> is to um, recruit volunteers to come into the classroom and teach kids about business and life and we do that with some very interactive hands-on learning materials um, in grades kindergarten through high school. Well, when we first encountered it, I moved from the Tri-Cities about five years ago, and it wasn't available in Yakima at that time. And my kids went to Sunset View Elementary and came across it in second grade, and they built a donut shop and went out, and they were so just alive with the donuts. That was what they wanted to do. My, my kids were going to spend the rest of their life making donuts <laughs> until they went out and actually got into breaking down the mechanics of how much it cost per donut to manufacture. So they felt they had their price set right for the donut, but then when they factored in their overhead costs, then it wasn't as profitable as they had hoped it would be. And so then they were thinking about what other things they could do in the food industry. And so, I mean, for kids in second grade, it was just fantastic. I was so happy for them to get that. Isn't that, that's what's amazing, because people will say to me, well, I understand high school, what you could do with high school kids, middle school, but what about elementary? Mm -hmm. I had one of my favorite JA experiences in the second grade. We come in and we roll out that big poster of the community, yes. and um, the teacher had tipped me off that one of the students um, had told her that he absolutely wasn't going to learn to read. His dad couldn't read, oh. and he was not going to learn to read, and it didn't matter what she seemed to say to him, he just wouldn't buy into that concept. Mm -hmm. and and so through my five 50-minute visits, I talked about all the different jobs in the community, did the assembly line piece, and um, we just talked about, uh, I looked at him and I said, you would be a great police officer. You look brave and strong, and you could see this little guy just sitting up in his chair. Okay. And through those role plays and through those discussions about reading, right at the end of my fifth visit, my last visit, I said, could somebody volunteer, raise your hand if you can show me a job in our community where you need to be able to read. And so luckily all the students raised their hand by that time they were really into it. And so I picked on Junior, he came up and he's looking at this giant poster and he's looking and he's looking, I'm looking at these great big brown eyes, Aww. he's just slowly going through every single job and you can see the wheels turning and he says to me, the aha moment. Yeah, he says, you you have to be able to read to do every job in our community. And I said, really? Yes, really. So as much as his teacher had told him that, right. it took those activities and him coming to that conclusion to know that reading was really important. And it changed his outlook. It changed his willingness to learn how to read. So, oh. you know, then you walk out of that and you say, in one hour of my life, I made an impact on a child that really could change really his life, even in second grade. Junior achievement is just outstanding. And so I know you are growing and have an ambitious growth plan. So would you tell we us more do. about that? We've been in operation here in the Tri-Cities for 25 years. Mm -hmm. We started out serving about 130 kids a year. We now serve nearly 10,000 per year, um, but never enough. The right. more you do, mm -hmm. the more teachers hear about it, the more parents hear, the more requests we get. So we hope um, within the next five years to serve 60,000 students here in the greater Tri-Cities and Walla Walla area. So everybody can really get access to it. Absolutely. And so uh, we just, we need lots of volunteers, lots of wonderful role models from our community to come in. And like I said, it's, the commitment can be as few as five 50 minute lessons. Well, and you brought your bag along so you oh, can yes. show, because I think sometimes when people think they volunteer, they think, how can I teach this? I can't go and inspire someone to read, or I can't teach someone, but you just make it yeah. easy. So Yeah, it's really easy. This suitcase is everything that you get when you agree to teach a fifth grade program. Mm -hmm. This happens to be our fifth grade curriculum. It's STEM-based, so it teaches kids about science, technology, engineering, math, um, how they can uh, participate in our global economy through those wonderful career opportunities. Every single grade level, if you volunteer, you receive one of those suitcases. Really well thought out lesson plans, posters, stickers, workbooks. Each child gets a CD. There's technology involved. But again, it's not you going in and telling kids. No. It's you going in and put thing, putting them in activities where they really 
they really capture that in their heart. And it was, as a volunteer, I had the privilege of doing this with DOE, with Karen Lutz and some other members at ORP, and we team taught a class. And there were plenty of materials, and it just wasn't that difficult to do because the materials are so wonderful. And I loved the place where we got to lay the city out, and then we got to create all the different buildings and lay them out and spread our city out how we'd like to do it. And I got to work with the, the little newspaper and the creating of the newspaper and saw how that would circulate and help share business ideas, classifieds, help share the, the good things going on in that city. And the kids were just empowered with that. They loved it. They loved when we came to teach them. Um, they were excited and interested. And it was, it was less work and more reward than I expected as a volunteer. I'm glad to hear that. And that's the message we really want the viewers to hear, is that it's not that hard. And really, if they're kind of sitting on the fence, they're not sure if they can see themselves in the classroom making this happen, we invite them to come to training. It's about two and a half hours, and they can just see more of the materials and learn more about how the whole process works. And at that point, they can decide if they think it's something they'd like to do this year. And now, what, what do they get in the training? What, what's that like for them? Well, we don't teach a lot about content because every kit is different. The materials are sequential. So our goal is that every child would get the program every single year because it all builds upon itself. But we teach them about process, how to manage a classroom, and um, what to do if a child isn't engaged. And they're, they're fortunate and they're happy to know that the teacher stays in the classroom the whole time. Mm -hmm. So if they get a question they're not sure how to answer or a student they're not sure how to quite work with, the teacher's there to take that over. Yeah, the teachers have been very supportive in both the experiences that my girls had at Sunset View and then where I volunteered in Richland. Um, the teachers were well aware of the program, worked with the volunteers, facilitated, of course, were there to participate and round up and also to offer any necessary discipline. So that just made it um, just golden for the volunteers. They could come in and make their contributions and um, didn't have to feel like they'd have the total responsibility for the class. So. Yeah. It's, it's just a lot of fun, very rewarding. And, and people can pick which grade level, which area of our city they want to teach in. I love to teach in the schools that have more disadvantaged kids in them because that just touches my heart. Yes. I had um, an eighth grade class uh, at, a, at the school I went to when I was a kid, which is also very fun oh. um, to go in and teach. And uh, the kids there really were so interested in how to start a business. I know in some of the more affluent middle schools when summer is coming close, they're kind of thinking about baseball camp and a cool oh, yeah. vacation and all that. Mm -hmm. These kids, they wanted to know how to make money so that when they went to high school in the fall, they had the right clothes and the right shoes to fit in. Oh, and so when sweet. I started teaching them about entrepreneurism and innovation and all the things that we teach in the eighth grade program, they were just captivated. It was it was amazing how yeah it wasn't just about lawn mowing and babysitting. They had very creative ideas about how they could make money over the summer. And then that good self sufficiency, yeah. independence. You know yeah. the 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 self esteem that comes from being able to take care of yourself uh, to create that bigger vision. In fact, there was one little boy eighth grade, I guess they're medium-sized boys, but he sat <laughs> on the right-hand side on the back, never spoke, all six visits. He just, I couldn't engage him. He just sat there, had his little Harry Potter glasses on. Aww. He just sat there. I just, no matter what I did, how close I stood or however I tried to draw him out, never said a word until that last class, um, I was standing by the teacher's desk, the bell rang, the kids came flooding in, mm -hmm. and here comes George, and he's got this huge stack of books, and he's walking in, and he comes up where I'm standing, and he dumps them all on the teacher's desk, and he says to me, ma'am, and this is the first <laughs> word he said to me, <laughs> six one-hour visits, uh, yes, ma'am, <laughs> um, I'm going to do it. I am going to start a business Aww. right now. I'm not even waiting for summer, ma'am. I'm going to do this right now. And I looked at this stack of books. He'd he gone to the public him. library, to the public library, and he took every single book that they'd let him take on how to start a business, how to run a business, business ideas. George, who hadn't, I, I thought I didn't even connect with George, and he had, you know, he had a vision there for how he could kind of step out of poverty, how he could solve his problems with being ready for school in the fall. That, oh you know, when you, those are the goosebumps that come when you really make a connection that's beyond just sharing content. It's really expanding that child's vision of what they can do. 
Well, from, from what I've seen and experienced, I think anybody who does anything with junior achievement, whether they see it right there in the classroom, like you had those opportunities, or whether it's just something you did that will be a pay it forward, it makes a difference. It's really important. It so really does. How can someone sign up? They want to well, join Junior Achievement. They want to help you. They want to take part of this wonderful program. We'd love to have them. They can give us a call. I think they're going to be running the phone number and our website. They can look at all the different grade levels, the materials that we do teach at each grade level, and we'd love to work with them. And employers, maybe you're an employer and you don't have the time right now to teach, but um, you have employees that you would maybe want to get involved. It's just such a win-win because it's skills-based volunteering. The volunteers get a chance to polish their leadership and presentation skills and tell the company story in the community to the company's employees' kids, grandkids, to their future uh, employ employees. So it's just a great opportunity to send your, your employees out and um, make a difference in the community as well. So hopefully we can go from that. 10,000 group of students we're serving now up to the 60,000 goal, but it'll only happen if people volunteer, so we hope they'll join in. Absolutely. Deb, thank you so much. It's been just a pleasure to have you here, and I wish you the very best with this. Thanks so much. Look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks for joining us. This is Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley, and hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.